Up next on The Reveal. Lynn Airport 911, Operator Taylor. Medical emergencies at the Atlanta airport. They should be there by now. I said to them, I would never want to get sick at the airport if this is how fast you guys respond. Why first responders aren't getting there fast enough. Tell me why passengers, visitors, should feel safe knowing that you haven't been able to meet your goal. Hey man, you might want to get back, it might blow up. It was, it was surreal. Get over! Vehicles bursting into flames on the roadways. Get away! Get away from it! The car maker is accused of not offering a fix. My life was put at risk, my family's life was put at risk. And uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna cut it. Miko suffered at the hands of somebody else. He was kicked, he was slung around like he was a doll. Could taking your pet to the groomer kill them? You can't just look at the credentials on the wall to say this is a good safe place for me to, to bring my pet. The reveal now begins with investigators Faith Abube and Brendan Keith. Welcome to The Reveal, a show dedicated to life-changing investigations. When someone inside Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport calls 911 for help, the city's fire department responds. But our investigation reveals response time to the busiest airport in the world often doesn't meet the goal. Lynn Airport 911, Operator Taylor. A call for help after an airport employee collapses this past August inside Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. She was laying right in here. We need an uh, MLM uh, up on the A concourse in the airport in the full court. She was laying on her side and you could see pain and anguish in her face. Everybody was just in shock. Fellow employees and passengers start CPR and wait for first responders to arrive. They should be there by now. But they weren't there, and passengers like Tammy Mitchell grew anxious as the airport employee suffers a massive heart attack in front of her. Everyone's like throwing their hands at the people that work there, like I'm frustrated. We made patient contact. The Atlanta Fire Department finally arrives. Mitchell is so upset, she sends this tweet to Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms writing, it should not take paramedics 17 minutes to show up. Mayor Bottoms tweets back, wait time doesn't appear to have been as long as it seemed. But here are the dispatch records. It turns out Mitchell's concerns were valid. Records show it took more than 13 minutes for the fire department to arrive and an additional three more minutes for a stretcher to transport the airport employee. I said to them, I would never want to get sick at the airport if this is how fast you guys respond. That's when he said, we're short staffed and he told me Everything. We're short staffed. We got a call. We're on E. This is Concourse A. And we didn't even come until we realized that CPR was in progress. There are a lot of challenges that we face at the airport. Deputy Chief Antonio Webb is head of fire department operations at the airport. Is that an acceptable amount of time to respond to a heart attack? And in a perfect world, in a perfect condition, I would say no. The same day the airport employee suffered a heart attack, an accounting office at the airport called for the fire department too, after smelling smoke. Listen to the dispatcher explain how she's unsure where she dispatched crews. They're supposed to be at the North Terminal 30th floor. Oh, the North Terminal. I told them North Terminal. Don't tell them where they are. Hold on. <laughs> While the caller canceled the emergency shortly after firefighters arrived, it took them nearly nine minutes to respond. They probably over there at the atrium. Yeah, I told them no checkpoint like three times. Because every time we call, they go in the wrong direction. Oh. <laughs> what I heard on the audio in a short amount of time that I actually heard it is um, something that really needs to be looked into. The fire department's goal is to respond to medical emergencies under eight minutes, 90% of the time. According to records reviewed by the reveal, it's never reached above 58% over the past two and a half years. In 2016, response times were such a concern to one security officer, he sent this email to an airport manager writing, response times need to be quicker. There may be serious systemic failures. The airport never responded. This is the busiest airport in the world. Tell me why passengers, visitors, should feel safe knowing that you haven't been able to meet your goal. If you look at our overall performance in terms of saving lives, our overall performance 
is what should truly paint the picture of what Atlanta Fire Rescue Department at Hartfield Jackson is about. Chief Webb argues survivability rates for patients is what really matters, saying the department's rate is better than the national average. 11 Alive also uncovered the fire department suffers from severe staffing shortages at the airport. Department policy mandates at least 61 firefighters on duty a day here. But according to city records, the city has about half as many first responders as it needs. Is that impacting safety at all? Impacting safety in terms of our units responding to emergency medical calls. Do you guys have enough crews? Yes, so essentially we have a designated number of members that are required to be on duty every single day. And we accomplish that by hiring members to work extra through our overtime process. Despite the time it took to respond to the airport employee's heart attack, Chief Webb says she survived. That young lady made it home to her family, to be with her family another day. It was traumatizing. Mitchell believes the employee only survived because passengers responded quickly, not the fire department. That should not happen in an airport as big as Atlanta. And I would love to see this not happen to someone else. And that's just stunning, Andy. How does the airport here compare to other major airports in the country? So we checked around and according to records provided by LAX in Los Angeles, it responds in about seven and a half minutes on average to medical calls. Atlanta is about a minute slower in in O'Hare. According to records it provided us, it responds under nine minutes, 93% of the time. Again, Atlanta is slower with about 68%. So what is ATL doing to fix this problem? Of course, they're trying to hire more crews and they're building a brand new fire department, a sixth one by 2020. Up next on The Reveal. I would get near it. A concern for everyone on the road. Get over, get over. Hundreds of reports that certain vehicles have burst into flames. It happened to a local mother. I don't know what I would have done if I got stuck. If you have a news tip or a comment on one of our investigations, email us at thereveal at 11alive.com. Tonight, safety advocates are calling on car makers Kia and Hyundai to issue a new recall for millions of their vehicles after hundreds burst into flames while on the road. I wouldn't get near it. This one happened on a freeway in Dallas last October. Flames were shooting out from underneath the 2014 Kia Soul and the driver had no idea. And the next thing, the car just exploded. It was like a Mission Impossible movie without Tom Cruise. Get over! Get over! The same thing happened to a 2012 Kia Sorento in Orlando. Get away! Get away from it! As of tonight, more than a million Kia and its related company, Hyundai's vehicles, are under recall for engine failure. It's for the 2011 through 2014 model years, but there's still no recall for the engine fires even though there have been hundreds of reports just like the ones you just saw. And now the 11 Alive investigators have uncovered a new concern related to the engine fires after a Georgia school teacher's life was put at risk. These are the last memories school teacher Jessica Miner has of her Kia Optima, the first car she and her husband bought as a family. We had you know, a lot of memories in that car. She was expecting to make many more when August 29th, on her way to pick up her two children, the family car burst into a ball of fire. It was, it was, it was surreal. Moments earlier, you were sitting right there. Right there, and had no clue what was coming. The door, I don't know what I would have done if I had got stuck. Hey man, you might want to get back, it might blow up. By the time firefighters choked out the flames in the Snellville parking lot, Miner was already trying to figure out what went wrong. I was very confused because I know I hadn't hit anything, you know, I hadn't ran over anything. The engine wasn't even due for its first oil change. In fact, Miner had just gotten it back from a Kia dealership with a brand new engine. That was barely three months prior when Kia and Hyundai recalled more than 1.6 million vehicles because of engine failure due to debris. They give us an engine that's supposed to be new and it catches on fire. I mean, I just, that's just bizarre to me and it's scary. It's very scary. If they think just that recall alone, which was for engine debris, 
that uh, is going to fix this problem? Well, the evidence would suggest that it's not. For Jason Levine, the executive director of the Center for Auto Safety, Miner's story is part of a troubling trend now emerging from the engine fire concerns. Get over! What is going on? We've got hundreds of fires spread across five different uh, models for them. This is frightening. Levine's group was already demanding a massive recall of 2.9 million Kia and Hyundai vehicles. After hundreds of complaints, these models were randomly catching fire without so much as a crash. I wouldn't get near it. Get over! Get over! Get away! Get away from it! And now this discovery that even newly replaced engines are still catching fire. It's raising concerns that perhaps the car maker might not even know what's causing the problem. Car fires kill people, they injure people, uh, and they certainly put everyone on the road in danger. So we'd like to see Kia and Hyundai take this a little more seriously than just putting out press releases. Kia hasn't issued a recall to specifically address these engine fires, nor has it said exactly what's causing them. But in a statement to the 11 Alive investigators, the company says all cars have the ability to catch fire. And if Kia is aware of a post-recall repair incident, it'll work with the customer to reach a satisfactory resolution. It certainly sounds like good PR spin, but I think if you talk to Kia customers who have had these vehicles burn up on them, that's not the experience they're having. Mm -hmm. Miner hadn't heard from them for weeks until the 11 Alive investigators started contacting Kia. These are not the kind of souvenirs you wanted to keep? No, not, right, not at all. You know, my life was put at risk. My family's life was put at risk. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's just not going to cut it. Who knows how many other ticking time bombs are out there on the road. And as we were digging into the story, a Senate committee scheduled a hearing inviting the CEOs of Kia and Hyundai to come explain exactly what's going on with these engine fires. That hearing is scheduled for November 14th. Faith, what about the school teacher? She's heard from Kia since you started asking questions. What are they telling her or what's the status of her case? So according to her, they've offered to pay some of the money. They've offered to pay her rental car fee as well as some of the items she lost in that vehicle. But as of right now, they haven't set a date as to when they'll send that check out. <laughs> Coming up. Miko was only three years old, and he was my dog. Justice for Miko. He was put back on the table with his lead on, and he was choked to death. And how you can prevent your family pet from becoming a victim. She took Miko, and she abused him. She drug him through the store. She kicked him. Strangled, kicked, dragged, knocked in the head. It's horrific. They pushed, campaigned, spoke out to see this day. To see this woman, Michelle Root, in handcuffs led away to prison to see justice for Miko. Miko was a dog killed at the hands of his groomer, a type of abuse that is far more common than you might think. And tonight, Miko's owner is sharing her story of how a cut and wash can turn deadly if your dog ends up in the wrong hands. <laughs> Pets are family. Miko was only three years old, and he was my dog. Miko. He would sleep next to me on my pillow with my hand on top of him every night. The last time Mavelle saw her dog alive was the day she dropped Miko off at the groomer. Miko suffered at the hands of somebody else. He was kicked, he was slung around like he was a doll. And then he was put back on the table with his lead on, and he was choked to death. The groomer was convicted of animal abuse, but nationwide, neglect and improper care is also killing pets. An investigation by NJ Advanced Media found 47 deaths connected to PetSmart over the past decade. The report says two thirds of the animals died since 2015. Owners say they took their dogs in for a nail clipping or a haircut, and they died from rough handling or intense stress. Some dogs were allegedly placed in drying cages, unable to escape as air pushed in. According to NJ.com, at least one dog suffocated. PetSmart states it follows the, quote, highest grooming safety standards in the industry for the 13 million pets groomed there every year.
So how do you know if a cage is safe? We talked to 50 groomers across Atlanta and found four using heated drying cages. We did find these photos posted by groomers online stating that their cages are safe because the dryers aren't heated. You can ask your groomer how your dog will be dried and if heat will be used. Also ask how your pet will be monitored. We can't just say, well, our plan is that these things aren't going to happen. We need to know that someone is there that can notice when a medical emergency is happening and sort of act accordingly. We contacted 50 Atlanta area groomers to find out if their staff is trained in pet first aid. One out of five said no or they were unsure. One out of four reported an emergency that required first aid. Yet, there are no state regulations for groomers to be certified. You can't just look at the credentials on the wall to say, this is a good, safe place for me to, to bring my pet. Miko's groomer, Michelle Root, was sentenced to three years in prison. She's also banned from being around animals. If you have a news tip or a comment on one of our investigations, email us at thereveal at 11alive.com. A nine-year-old Marietta girl is kidnapped, raped, and murdered. But more than 40 years later, Debbie Lynn Randall's killer remains a mystery. Now, armed with new DNA evidence, Cobb County is taking another look at the case, and so are we. Tonight, a behind-the-scenes look at how digital reporter Jessica Nolan and I are turning to a graphic artist for help taking us back in time. I really, really hope that this, like, encourages somebody to remember something that maybe they had forgotten or didn't want to talk about. Freelance artist Amanda Wood has spent months drawing Debbie's final hours. You had to sit and think mm -hmm. about what this little girl went through. Yes, I did. I did. I actually I cried a lot. It was really upsetting. It was really important for me um, in those drawings for it to be Debbie's story. Because this is a story of a frightened little girl, we made her killer a monster. Seeing that, it, it breaks your heart. And in this story, Debbie, who loved to play with dolls, is represented by one. And not just any doll, a rag doll. He had just tossed her aside like a rag doll um, into these woods after he did what he did to her. You do all the things, and then you capture it. But she says the hardest picture to draw was Debbie's family, who live with the violent memory and mystery of her death. You know they think about it just all the time. It doesn't go away for them. And like the brother and those girls at the laundromat. Everybody. Everybody was... And the detective, he's like thinking about it all the time too. And now we are. Join us next Sunday as we use those sketches along with interviews from her family, even an eyewitness, as we piece together Debbie Lynn Randall's story, The Doll and the Monster. You've been watching The Reveal, a show fueled by investigations that have impact. And we'll see you next week for The Reveal.